Hi everyone. I welcome you all for this Nursing Wisdom channel. Today we are going to see about umbilical cord and its abnormalities. The umbilical cord or funis forms the connecting link between the fetus and the placenta through which the fetal blood flows to and from the placenta. It extends from the fetal umbilicus to the fetal surface of the placenta. Structure of umbilical cord the umbilical cord normally contains two umbilical arteries, a single umbilical vein, an obliterated allantois duct, all surrounded by Wharton's jelly and contained within an outer layer of amnion. Amnion It is outer layer lined by a single layer of amniotic epithelium. Wharton's jelly it consists of gelatinous connective tissue. It is rich in mucopolysaccharides. It helps to protect the umbilical cord blood vessels. Umbilical cord blood vessels. Initially, there are four blood vessels, two arteries and two veins. Of the two umbilical veins, the right one disappears by the fourth month, leaving behind one vein. So later, normal umbilical cord consists of two umbilical artery and one umbilical vein. The umbilical arteries carry deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the placenta. The umbilical vein carries oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus. Allantois, a blind tubular structure may occasionally present near the fetal end which is continuous inside the fetus with its uracus and bladder. Normal umbilical cord the normal length of umbilical cord is 50 cm with an usual variation of 30 to 100 cm. The normal diameter of umbilical cord is 1.5 cm with variation of 1 to 2.5 cm. The umbilical cord insertion in the center of the placenta. Function of umbilical cord it transports the infant's blood between the baby and the placenta. It provides nourishment and action to the newborn while also removing waste items. Let's see the umbilical cord abnormalities. According to the insertion of cord, we can divide the abnormalities into forcate insertion, marginal insertion, velamentous insertion, vasa previa. According to the size of the umbilical cord, we can divide the abnormalities into a cardia, short cord, long cord, false knot, true knot, cord loops, cord prolapse, lean cords and thick cords. According to cord coiling, we can divide the abnormalities into hypocoiled cords and hypercoiled cords. According to number of vessels, we can divide the abnormalities into single umbilical artery and four vessel cord. And other abnormalities include torsion, stricture, hematoma, and cyst. Let's see one by one detail. Hurricane placenta. In this, the umbilical vessels separate before reaching the placenta, lose their water jelly, and insert at the placenta centrally, eccentrically, or marginally. These exposed vessels are prone to thrombosis and to get injury. Chance of third trimester bleeding and fetal death. Chance of cord avulsion. Cord avulsion means rupture of umbilical cord from its insertion site and may require manual removal of placenta. Next one is marginal insertion otherwise called as battle door placenta. In this, the cord is attached to the margin of the placenta. It is called because of its resemblance to the racket used in battle door, a game which is a precursor of badminton. Clinical significance, there is chance of cord compression in vaginal delivery leading to fetal anaxia and even death. Cord being pulled off during delivery of the placenta. Next one is velamentous placenta. In this, the cord is attached to the membranes. The branching vessels traverse between the membranes for varying distance before they reach and supply the placenta, in which the major umbilical vessels separate in the fetal membranes before reaching the placental disc. Such a condition is of no major consequence in utero, but could lead to a greater chance for vasa previa, cord trauma with bleeding during delivery, fetal distress and stillbirth. 
Next one is Vasa Previa. Vasa Previa is the dam used when fetal blood vessels slice over the internal os of the cervix in front of the presenting pod. Risk factor, velamentous insertion, succinctuate placenta, bilobed placenta, multilobed placenta, placenta previa and multiple pregnancy. Clinical significance, rupture of the membranes involving the overlying vessels lead to vaginal bleeding. As it is entirely fetal blood, this may result in fetal exsanguination and even death. Next one is acardia. Acardia means absence of umbilical cord. It is a body stock anomaly also known as absence of the umbilical cord syndrome. It is a fatal condition resulting from maldevelopment of embryonic body folding and is associated with multiple congenital defects. Short cord. The length of cord less than 20 cm is defined as short cord. Clinical significance. Failure of external version, prevent descent of the presenting port, especially during labor, leads in prolonged labor, separation of a normally situated placenta and cause apropsio placenta, favor malpresentation. Next one is long cord. The length of cord more than 80 cm is defined as long cord. Clinical significance, cord prolapse, cord compression, Cord entanglement round the neck or the body, cord knot. False knot, false knot otherwise called as pseudo knot, is a very common variation in umbilical cords caused by extra looping of the blood vessels inside the water jelly or accumulation of water jelly or due to varices. False knot do not have any clinical significance and can range from very small to several centimeters. True knot. The true knot occurs when the umbilical cord loops around itself during pregnancy as the fetus moves around in the amniotic fluid. Clinical significance. When the knot tightens, it can compress the blood vessels in the umbilical cord, cutting off the supply of oxygen-rich blood to the fetus. This can lead to death or to long-term effects such as cerebral palsy, intellectual impairments and developmental disorders. Next one is umbilical cord loops. Sometimes during pregnancy or labor, the cord gets looped around the baby's neck. When this happens, it's called a nuchal cord. This may happen because of how the baby moves in the mother's uterus or it can happen when the cord is very long. Clinical significance due to compression of the cord or the cord wrapping too tightly around its neck, baby does not get enough oxygen and leads to birth aspasia. The loops may be one loop of nuchal cord, two loops of nuchal cord, three loops of nuchal cord or cord around neck and body. Next one is umbilical cord prolapse. Umbilical cord prolapse is a condition in which the cord lies in front of the presenting port or umbilical cord descends alongside and the fetal membranes are ruptured. Types of umbilical cord, occult prolapse, overt prolapse and cord presentation. Occult prolapse otherwise called as hidden prolapse. In this, umbilical cord descends and present by the side of presenting port. Over to prolapse in this umbilical cord presence below the presenting port. Cord presentation it is otherwise called as funic presentation. This occurs when the umbilical cord lies in front of the presenting port with the membrane still intact. Lean and thick cord. The normal diameter of umbilical cord is 1.5 cm with variation of 1 to 2.5 cm. Lean cord that circumference of umbilical cord is less than 1 cm and is associated with forced dates or small for gestational age births. Thick cord in this the umbilical cord is more thick can be related to an increased amount of water jelly. It is associated with diabetes mellitus, macrosomia, hemolytic anemia and fetal hydrops. Next one is umbilical cord coiling. Cord vessels spiral through the cord. 
hypercoiling the term hypercoiling refers to abnormal increases in the coiling of umbilical cord it linked with fetal demise iugr intrapartum hypoxia hypocoiling the term hypocoiling of the cord refers to abnormal decrease in the coiling of the umbilical cord it is linked with fetal distress oligohydromnios preterm delivery growth retardation meconium staining during delivery fetal heart rate alteration and low cord ph next one is single umbilical artery single umbilical artery is present in about 1 to 2% of cases it may be due to failure of development of one artery or due to its atrophy in later months it is more common in twins and in babies born of diabetic mothers or in polyhydromnios it is frequently associated with congenital malformation of the fetus renal and genital anomalies trisomy 18 or common There is increased chance of abortion, prematurity, IUGR, and increased perinatal mortality. Next one is four vessel cord. Four vessel umbilical cord anomaly commonly seen are two umbilical arteries and two umbilical veins. This may be associated with multiple congenital malformations, including congenital heart disease, genitourinary malformations, skeletal malformations. central nervous system malformations cleft lip and fetal hydrops next one is umbilical cord torsion torsion means twisting so umbilical cord torsion is defined as excessive twisting of the cord at any site along the entire length of the umbilical cord it is an uncommon cause of intrauterine fetal demise Usually it is not diagnosed antenatally but upon pathological examination umbilical cord torsion can lead to critically reduced fetal bed flow and fetal hypoxia oligohydrops iugr and fetal death umbilical cord cyst umbilical cord cyst or sacs of fluid found in the umbilical cord umbilical cord cyst are usually classified as true cyst and pseudo cyst true cyst which contain fluid from the embryo and usually go away on their own pseudo cyst are more common than true cyst which contain fluid from inside the umbilical cord and can be linked to certain genetic condition umbilical cord structure structure of the umbilical cord was defined as a decrease in diameter in relation of the remaining umbilical cord fetal demise most commonly occurred in the second trimester with a mean gestation age of 21 weeks next one is umbilical cord hematoma umbilical cord hematoma is defined as the extra vascation of blood mainly venous in the warten jelly that covers the umbilical vessels mostly an umbilical cord hematoma occurs spontaneously and the exact cause is often not detected however the cord anomaly includes a short cord traction not prolapse iatrogenic causes includes amniocentesis instrumentation infection coagulation disorder and post maturity should be considered as the potential causes i hope you got understand about umbilical cord and its abnormalities thanks for watching